How do we do discovery, follow-up, and inference when the data rates and requisite time scales preclude human involvement? It's not just discovering these objects, but if you have an event which is changing very rapidly in time, to do the most science with those objects that you find, you actually have to be responsive and get more data with other telescopes before this thing is gone. Where astronomers of the past had to rely on physical observations and photographic plates to study the universe, today's researchers are using advanced telescopes and digital photography to collect millions of observations in a single night. At the 2013 Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics Conference on Computational Science and Engineering, invited lecturer Joshua Bloom discussed how astronomers are using complex algorithms to manage this massive amount of data. When you have so much data, you can't have people in the real-time loop anymore looking at every single piece of data that comes in. And so having robotic telescopes allows us to be smart in um, programming them to follow up things that we decide are interesting. And so we can prescribe ahead of time, if this type of event happens in the sky, then you go after it telescope while I'm sleeping. And, and so it allows us to be smarter about our use of time and more efficient. Here is an observation taken on the 23rd of August in 2011 with the Palomar Transient Factory of a nearby galaxy called the Pinwheel Galaxy. And the next day there was a new object there. And um, uh, the next day that source was even brighter. 11 hours after what we think was the most nearby Type 1A supernova explosion in three decades, the Palomar Transient Factory not only had this data in the can, our machine learning codes had promoted this to the top of the stack for follow-up. There's also the aspect of um, just building algorithms that allow us to dig deeply into the data and find these sort of needle in the haystack that otherwise you'd need large numbers of people to be able to look at. One of the hard parts in doing time domain astronomy is trying to be open enough to the possibility that the universe might do something that you hadn't thought of while not taxing your resources so much that you just follow up everything that looks potentially interesting. This is Dr. Bloom also discussed the use of machine learning techniques in astrophysics studies, which include the construction and study of systems that can be trained to learn from data. We're using machine learning to help us with the discovery process, so that is taking what we have in our um, data set and saying what of what's here is actually interesting for further investigation. And we're, sh we're seeing that ML is beating out um, even crowdsourced people who are looking at the same data. And what's nice about machine learning is not just that it's automated, it's that it's reproducible. And if we're thinking about doing science, we need to be able to say why we did what we did. We have to take astronomers out of the data taking and in some parts the data inference um, or else we're going to get completely washed over by the data. There are other aspects of machine learning that I think could be very useful. Um, in deciding what's interesting to look at after you've already found it, um, this notion of classification, we're already starting to see some interest there. So before people start looking at data, and before they wake up, we have machines which have already started doing some of that early grunt work on, on inference.